Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the B3 Students Podcast. Pastor Andrew in the house with you. Uh, so glad you guys are tuning in to dive in a little bit more into Revelation and what we talked about particularly last week as we covered chapters 8 through 11. Uh, now before we dive into what we're going to talk about today, just want to let you know I don't have a guest. We're not going to have anybody on here because I want to just take a few moments and just kind of re reiterate a little bit of the application that we see from these particular chapters in Revelation. And I, and I want to say too that I, I know that we, we try to get into our groups every week and talk about these very things that we're going to talk about, but uh, it's just, it's been taking so long to go through some of the things that we're trying to teach through. And so uh, my prayer is, is that you're uh, continuing to to strive to, to read through it as we go through it, as well as um, help you know that you're understanding the things that we're saying because Revelation is a hard book. It's hard for me to teach, uh, hard to study, but um, but but I think what we're seeing as we go through it is is that there's so many good application points that we see from this. That's not just about you know the end of the world and destruction and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's a big part of it. It is, but there's a lot of application things that we can find for us, particularly as believers. And so I, I just want to take a few moments here to dive into some of that. Um, if you guys remember, uh, we covered. Uh, the seven trumpets this past week one of the things that i that i pointed out was is that if you look at the seven trumpets the first four trumpets uh really come from creation uh we see things in there that it talks about that the sun will be darkened uh, it talks about the moon and different things and so what we what we see here the application that i think we can find from this is as we noted that it's we, we do not need to put our hope in the created things of this world we see that within the judgments, within each trumpet, the first four, we see God using the most secure things, the things that we see that we have, water, um, the sun, the moon, all these things are now being used uh, or destroyed, parts of them, to uh, cast judgment. The application point is this, is that we do not put our hope in created things. Um, yes, things like the sun, the moon, water, all that stuff is good, but we do not worship those things above our creator we look at those things and that should give us a sense of all and point us to god because god was the one that created those things and he gives us those things to reflect him are you putting your hope in the very created things of this world material items or different things whatever that may be because i promise you as paul says all things on heaven and earth will pass away so we want to make sure that we are putting our hope and our trust and our everything is centered in God and in Jesus. Uh, secondly, we noted that the uh, last two trumpets, the fifth and sixth trumpets, are more uh, personal judgment centered around idolatry and immorality. What we see here is that in the midst of all the things that are going on, we see that, that in the fifth and sixth trumpet that there's a time when locusts will come from the earth. This moment when this happens that they'll want to die, they'll cry out to death, but death will not come upon them. And so we see that it's more uh, individual judgment on the people for the things that they did. And here's what I wanna highlight. Here's why I say that it's more individualized things because what we read in Revelation 9, 20 through 21 is a very interesting passage. It says the rest of the people who were not killed by these plagues, they did not repent of the works of their hands to stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, which we cannot see here or walk. And they did not repent of their murders, their sorceries, their sexual immorality, or their thieves. The point is this, is that this needs to serve to us as a warning that we need to flee from sin. That, that these people, even in light of seeing these judgments roll out, what, what we see here is, is that these people did not repent of their sin. Sin ultimately leads to destruction and death. Remember guys, I told you that uh, when it comes to the book of Revelation, particularly these passages, what we see with some of these things that are playing out, it relates over to the Exodus, Exodus where uh, Moses is trying to lead the people out of Egypt and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And, uh, and what we can see here is that our hearts can become, as people, our hearts can become so hardened that we tend to miss the point. We tend to miss the warnings. We tend to miss the signs. And so what I wanna ask you today is, and the practical application again for us is, are, are there things in our life, sin in our life, that we continue to run to that maybe we're missing the warning signs? 
do we do we understand that sin ultimately leads to destruction because that's really the most important lesson that we see studying these trumpets now there's many other things we could point out but just for the sake of what we're talking about here we see an illustration here in this text and, and what is to come the end result of all things and what do we see we ultimately see that sin leads to death and destruction and so i, I just want to encourage you to think about the the different things in your own life and sin that you that you struggle with, do you see it as something that's leading to some destruction? Because I truly believe one of the reasons why we don't flee from sin a lot of times is, is because we think that it's not gonna lead to destruction. I wanna be clear here. Yes, God gives grace. Uh, God God in Christ covers our, our sins, but, but in that we should strive to flee from sin to be as much like Christ as possible. And so students, what I really want us to see out is that sin leads to destruction ultimately leads to death. And a lot of times we get so enticed by these things that we we tend to go to it and continue to go back to it, but yet at the same time, we know that it leads to death and destruction. So I just wanna encourage you, if that's, if that's you, if you find yourself in a spot, and I've been there many times, lay that before God, lay that before Jesus. That, I mean, Jesus, he, he wants us to lay those and, and, we, and we can cry out for help from him for those various things that we struggle with. And he will provide that strength. It doesn't necessarily mean that the temptation will go away, but I promise you the Holy Spirit's in you. The Holy Spirit is there to help, helped us to repent from these things. So I just want to encourage you to think about sin in your own life that you struggle with and, and just seek for ways to flee from that because we see where it leads here. But also uh, we talked about last night that in Revelation 10 and 11, we see the reference to prophets or prophecy or prophesied a couple of different times. And so the other application that I think we could find from this is, is that we know the end result of what is to happen for people who do not know Christ. That they're going to be eternally separated from him. And there's going to be a time that we know that time will be up for people to come to know him. And so I just want to encourage you is to, if we read this, if we read about these events that are to take place and what's taking place for, for people that are not with God. They do not have a relationship with Jesus. And I think one of the things that we tend to assume is, is that there'll be plenty of time for people to come and, and repent of these things. But I'm telling you, one day the time is going to run out. And so I want you to think about your friends or maybe family members or others that may be struggling because they do not have a relationship with Christ. And so would you be willing to go in boldness and share the message of hope that is found in Christ, that, that, G, that God sent his son Jesus to die for us? And, and that he overcame death, he overcame the grave. Three days later, after he was put to death, that he served as the sacrifice, he got up out of the grave. And then he went to be with the Father, and he's going to come back again. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he sent his Son for us, for you, for me. And so would you have the boldness and the courage to share that with your friends or your family members who do not believe? Because we see here that the, the fate is an eternal hell, an eternal punishment, and this torment. And so if we truly love our brothers and sisters, our family members, our friends, if we truly love them, I think we should use, see this as a motivator for us to go out and share with them the good news that Jesus saves. And so would you be willing to do that? And I think that's what we see here is that even in the midst of everything that's going on, and regardless of what view you take, if you think the church will be here during the tribulation or if they're going to be gone before, it's, we see that we are called, our mission is to go and tell others about Jesus. And so I would encourage you to let's stay focused on the mission, no matter the opposition that we face. And so I would encourage you to just think about it. Let, let, let God lead you to share the message of Christ with somebody. Be bold through the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in boldness to go share it with somebody this week. And then finally, the last thing that we that we see and just going off the question, this is why is knowing that God's victory in the end when the seventh trumpet is blown that we read about in uh, chapter 11? Why is that so important for us today? Well, it's so important for us today because guys, no matter what we face, God is on the throne that he's sovereign, that he sent his son Jesus to die for us. We're secure in him. And so that means that, that we have the freedom to go and share. And no matter what we face in this world, the sufferings that we face now are nothing compared to the glory that is going to come later. 
And so I would just let that be an encouragement to you. As you face difficulties, as you face trials, as you face things in your life, maybe somebody's let you down or whatever it is, God is on the throne and he is ruling. When all hope seems lost in this world because things are happening and the world seems out of control, no, everything is moving according to the plan and the direction that God has already laid out. God is victorious now. He is going to be victorious then. He's always victorious. And so I just encourage you to think about those few things today. And so um, it, it's been so great to just walk through the book of Revelation. And, and I know there's so many different views and so many things that we can get caught up in. But remember, the ultimate purpose of the book of Revelation, the ultimate point can be summed up in three words. Our God wins. And so it's my prayer that we would keep that in mind as we read the book that we wouldn't just get into these things and debate all these things because I feel like if we start debating things and I mean they're healthy conversations to have but we miss the point and the point is is that this book in the first century when John was on the island and he was in this vision and God was revealing all these things and Jesus revealing all these things to him he was writing this to encourage a group of believers that were facing difficulty and it gave them the encouragement to continue to press on and so students or anybody else that's watching this, may God give you the grace and the boldness to continue to press on. So let that be an encouragement to you this week. Uh, I pray that uh, you continue to be encouraged as we read the book. I would encourage you to go back after we can after we conclude these messages and read through the book of Revelation even more. And I pray that you will be encouraged. I know I've been encouraged and just seeing uh, you all continue to come and continue to take part uh, is a great encouragement as well. So I pray that you all would have the boldness to go and uh, I pray that God would be with you and that uh, his grace would be with you as you continue to go and tell others about him and live your life in light of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Love you all, and I will see you next time.